I wasn't expecting to spend a lot of time in the mountains this year. I was expecting to be spending time at home with my wife and our first child, a girl. Unfortunately, our daughter Sammy was stillborn, and nothing seemed to be going as planned. It's in times of suffering that you lean on others the most. My wife, my family, and my friends helped me get through a terrible time. But what my soul craved was a place where I could truly listen and feel the presence of God. North Cascades, there is a mountain called Sahali. In native trade jargon, Sahali means high and heavenly. I craved a place where life slowed down and I felt at peace. I craved a place I could be still and listen and talk with God. I craved my own Sahali and I found it in the mountains. It was on an early bear hunting trip that I saw him for the first time. I'm not the kind of hunter who names bucks, but if any buck deserved a name, it was him. I knew I wanted to pursue him, but alpine blacktails are tricky. You see them in the alpine and velvet, but finding them during hunting season is another battle entirely. As summer progressed, I continued to spend time in the mountains, searching for my buck. I hiked and hunted in some nasty weather and into some of the toughest country. I packed a trail camera into the back country where I thought my buck would be hanging out, and after more than 700 pictures, never had a single picture of the monster buck. After numerous trips searching for my buck, I started hunting new areas and finding new animals to watch. I may have been hunting new animals, but that big buck never left the back of my mind. I found that the more time I spent in the wilderness, the more time I spent witnessing God's creation, and the more I could feel the truth of the words from Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. It didn't take me long to realize that this journey wasn't about a monster buck. It wasn't about some solitude that I was seeking. It was about time with my closest friends and family, who were there to support me. It was about finding that direct line communication with God that I always seem to find when I'm in the wilderness. It was about finding my high and my heavenly place. It was about finding my Sahali. But the story isn't just about me. I'd found my peace, 
but I still hadn't found my buck, and I wasn't about to give up. My hunches and instincts had so far been wrong on where the buck was living, but I decided to play a hunch. Prior to the October 11 rifle opener, I scouted out a hidden meadow more than a mile from where I had originally seen the buck. There was no way to glass the meadow from a distance, so I dropped hundreds of feet of elevation to get a glimpse into the meadow. I had no sightings, but I did hear a deer spook, and I had a new place to focus my efforts the following week. this meadow and I came right over that lip right there there's a doe and a fawn feeding right there and I walked up on them at 35 yards they had no clue I was there and I watched them feed all the way across this hill and eventually they caught me moving and took off into these trees as you can see it started raining and this is what hunting Western Washington's like but it really goes to show how that quality rain gear, I got the Kuyu Yukon jacket and the Kuyu pants. Quality rain gear helps you stay out here because these deer are still feeding, um, even in this rain. And uh, as long as you have visibility like I do right now, you never know what you're gonna see. So I know there's a, in this direction. Uh, let's see. Up there, there's another meadow. A little bit bigger than this one, actually. So hopefully we can uh, get lucky and catch a buck feeding out there. Buck down. <laughs> Holy crap. Holy crap. I just, I came up this hill and uh, I knew there was a big avalanche shoot here. And it just looked like great deer country. And, uh, Came around this corner and looked right down through this gap in the trees and there's a deer standing broadside. I assumed it was that doe from earlier and I pulled out my binoculars and there was big antlers sticking up. I have no clue how big it is. He looked nice. Um, he gave me plenty of time to get my gun up, felt steady, took the shot and I just saw him rolling down the hill. So I have no clue what I have. But we'll see. You can see the gap in the trees up there where I spotted him from. And I always pray whenever I shoot something that it's a quick, easy recovery, no searching, no looking for blood. Uh, just let it be quick and easy for the deer. Well, there he is. I haven't even seen him yet, so. I see some antler. It's definitely at least a three. Oh man. Oh man. Big body. Holy cow. What a great deer. What a great buck. 
Oh my goodness, it's the one I saw this summer. Check this out. Oh my. No way. What a beauty. Well, since I'm solo, I uh, took my time to bone out that deer. So I just finished, it took me about two and a half hours. Uh, I just wanna be careful not to cut myself. But all I have on me is this little pack, like I talked about earlier. And I gotta climb up that hill. At least if it doesn't look steep, it's really steep. So I have some stuff still down here. I'm gonna take one load up, come back down, get the rest, and then we'll, uh, the trail's at the top of the ridge. So once I uh, get to the trail, I'm gonna drop it and go down to the car and get my big pack so I can pack out the whole thing. But, can't complain, got a big buck. My Sahali didn't require me to shoot the buck I'd been chasing. It was the journey, the prayer, the reflection in God's creation that helped to bring me peace. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. The words of Psalm 40 bring me a hope, a hope that I discovered in my Sahali.